In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these three cell phone stands. Welcome to David's DIY Reviews. On this channel, we do a lot of woodworking builds, tool tutorials, and other woodworking DIY videos. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for a lot more really great content. And remember, instructions and dimensions will be in the description below. Now let's get into it. So the first step is going to be layout. I'm going to make mine four inches long to leave room for that pen holder on the back. If you don't want the pen holder, maybe do it three inches long. So I'll just uh, mark four inches there and draw my line across. Now the notch is going to be one inches in and you're going to make the notch just about a sixteenth of an inch longer than the thickness of your phone. So this phone is about um, it was five sixteenths of an inch, so I'm going to make my notch about three eighths of an inch thick. So I've made those, those two marks. I'm just going to draw my lines across for the notch. So you're going to want to make the notch on about maybe a 10 degree angle and go about three quarters of the way down. You can kind of just draw this by hand. This is just going to be something to guide your saw with as you cut. It doesn't have to be perfect. So this will definitely be the most difficult part of this build. So clamp your piece of wood in a vise or in your clamp as close to the vise as you can. It's going to, you know, vibrate, bounce around a lot less. And you want to just go ahead and put your saw on that same angle as your line and just really carefully start making that cut with just nice backstrokes because if you try to push forward on the saw right away, it's going to bite and it's going to be hard to get it started. So just go ahead and get that started on that angle. And once you've got it started, you can go ahead and just start cutting that angle out. And as you get to the bottom of your notch on both sides, just have a look and make sure your saw is nice and level so that your cut is going to be nice and flat on the bottom. And then go ahead and cut your second line. So make sure you start your saw on the cutout portion of the line because you start on the line or the other side of the line, your notch is going to end up being too big. So just on the inside of that line, go ahead and get that next cut started. And just be really careful to get the angle of that second line the same as your first. And even if your first line didn't end up being, you know, the perfect angle, just make the second one the same as the first and it'll work out just fine. And as you cut down, once again, just make sure your saw is nice and level at the bottom. Now there's a couple ways you could easily cut out the middle section. You could take like a, a saw, like a bigger or coarser saw or just any saw and just kind of cut out the middle and cut down a couple times and break the pieces off and then kind of smooth it out. Or what I'm going to do is actually grab my coping saw here and just bring it down in and just cut it across the bottom like this and that's going to be really nice. So you know whatever you kind of do to get that notch out. And you know what, even if the bottom of your cut's not perfect, you can clean that up with sandpaper or a file or whatever you gotta do to make that look nice. So don't worry about that too much right away. And if you're having trouble getting the bottom of the slot nice and flat and those edges nice and tight, you can actually get a coping saw or just kinda any little modeling saw and work it back and forth like this. I know it's obviously not really what a coping saw was designed for or any saw for that matter, but you know what, it really works well. I do this a lot when you're kinda doing a little finicky work and trying to clean it up, it works well you can get that bottom pretty much perfect to the point of sanding. <sighs> now the next thing I would do is just go ahead and put your phone in there. Make sure it fits in how you like it. Make sure it sits kind of on an angle that you want. You can kind of open the hole up a little more if you want a bit more angle. If you want less angle, you're probably just going to have to start over and make a narrower hole. But you know what? It's a good, good spot to stop, see how it's going, make sure it's working, and then we'll keep on going. So now I'm just going to cut the uh, phone stand to length and we'll be ready to drill that hole. So the next thing is going to be laying out the hole that you're going to drill for your pen if you chose to do that. And the reason I didn't lay that out first is because you don't really necessarily know the angle that your phone is going to lean at. Uh, the way I did mine actually doesn't leave a lot of room for air with drilling the hole. But that's how you're going to want to figure out where, you know, within the piece to put the hole. And then you're just going to want to find center, make your mark, and go ahead and drill it. So my material is randomly an inch and seven eighths wide, so half of that's going to be 15 sixteenths. So that's where my center is going to be. Center there. And then I think I'm going to come in 
you know, just about a quarter of an inch, not even exact. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it because of how my phone leans, because of how I want the pencil to sit. So just kind of right there is going to work. And then we'll just go ahead and drill that out. And yes, I'm using a hand drill. Why? Because hand drills. So now you just want to go ahead and give it all a nice little sand. You know, make sure you sand all in that slot really good and everything. And then that's going to be about it. So the first step is going to be doing your layout for the bottom piece. So I'm just going to mark this at 5 inches. And then draw my line across. And then you want to lay out the notch. And the notch is going to be an inch and a quarter up from the bottom. And then you're going to cut the notch halfway across whatever the width of your material is. And then your notch is going to be just over three quarters of an inch wide so that the two pieces can slide together. So then you just want to go ahead and draw your notch. That way when you cut it you can stop exactly where you have to. So I'm going to go ahead and lay out both pieces at once. Now I know if you lay out both and then you cut it in half, you're going to lose a bit of length because of the kerf, which is the, you know, the gap that the saw cuts. But for this project, it's not the end of the world. It's more of just a, you know, a decorative piece. So I'm going to mark that and draw my line across for this is the upright piece. And for the upright piece, the notch is going to be two inches up from the bottom. So I'm just going to mark that. And I'm going to go ahead and lay that out, draw it out the exact same way I did the first one. So now you're going to have both pieces laid out, ready to cut. Now I'm going to use my miter box and just a regular handsaw to make these cuts. But I mean, you can just hold the piece of wood, you can clamp it down, whatever works for you. Now I would recommend cutting both your notches out before you actually cut your piece in half because that's going to make it a lot easier to cut the notches instead of having to handle smaller pieces of wood. And you just want to cut all the way down just to the bottom of your notch that you do. So cut both sides right down to the bottom. And then what I'm going to use to cut the bottom of my notch is just this little wire coping saw I have. Um, it works really great because you can just put it down in there, turn it 90 degrees and cut across. But you can use any coping saw for this or you can just cut down in with your hand saw a few times and then you know break the pieces off and sand it or file it or whatever works for you just to get that notch cut out. And then you just want to do the same thing with the other notch. And remember when you get to the bottom of your notch to make sure your saw is flat so that the bottom of your notch isn't going to have angles. Now in order to cut your second notch out with the coping saw, you're going to have to cut your pieces apart because the C of the coping saw that I have isn't big enough and most won't be big enough to cut that bottom notch out. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my pieces in half now. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut out the other bottom of my notch in the upright piece. And when you cut with a coping saw across like this, it's, it's easy to, you know, kind of get out of whack a little bit or have your line not be perfect. But that's stuff you can fix up later with a file or some really coarse sandpaper. So don't worry about that too much. Now you just want to give it a good little sand. Sand up all your edges. Sand in that slot that you made really nicely. And then it's going to look really good. And once you're done, you can, you can paint this, you can stain it. I like to leave it raw because I kind of like that look. You can do whatever you want. So for this phone holder, it, the, uh, the main portion is going to be six inches long. So the first thing, like always, you want to do is your layout. So I'm just going to mark my six inches and draw my line across. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut that main piece off because that is just a solid piece of wood. There's no more to do to that once you cut it off. The back portion that props this against the ground, it's going to be an inch and a half. So I'm just going to, once again, mark that an inch and a half and draw my line across. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that off right away. Now the front piece, the piece that actually holds the phone, it's going to be an inch and a half as well. So again, I'll mark that and do my layout right away on that, draw my line across. Now the reason for the hole on the front of this is going to be for your phone uh, cord to go through. Now you can either drill that with a big drill bit, 
you can just cut a square notch. What I'm going to do actually though, is I'm going to use a, a Forstner bit to cut that out just because I happen to have one and it works well for it. You could also just leave it flat and not cut a notch and your phone can still rest on there like that. So if you're going to drill it out or make a notch, you're going to want to find center and mark that. And once again, if you're actually going to drill a hole or cut it a notch, you don't want it to quite cut your piece in half. You want some material left over so that when you put it on, the notch is just in the front part. Now I suppose you could do this with a hole saw as well, but the interesting thing is here is the Forstner bit actually is going to stick out past the end of the wood, kind of in, in mid-air. And that makes it, you know, a little bit interesting to do, but if you're careful, it's not too bad. And now that you've got your hole drilled, you're going to want to go ahead and just cut that off. So again, I'm just going to use my miter box here because it works, it's convenient, and cut that off. So now if everything is going according to plan, you should have three pieces that look something like this. So now when we nail and glue these to the main portion, you're going to want to have it an inch and a half up from the bottom to the center. So I'm going to go ahead and actually draw a line across at an inch and a half on both sides. That way it's going to be really easy to line up both pieces when I go to nail and glue them on. And I've kind of actually decided to change where I want to mount this on it. I've gone down a little bit. You can just kind of move it like this and play around with the angle to get it to, you know, stand exactly how you're going to want it. So I'm going to go ahead and actually get both my nails started so that when I nail this through, it's going to be easier to hang on to and the nails will just go straight through into it nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of glue on this, not too much. I mean, it's not a structural piece. It just has to hold together. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, nail it up. Now when I nail the other portion on, what I'm actually going to do is glue it up, hold it there, and just put one nail right in the center. And that's going to be enough to hold it. And once you've got it all nailed together and glued up, we can just give it a final little sand. And then you can go ahead and paint this, you can stain it, you can do whatever you want with it. It looks really nice, it works really well. So like I said, uh, dimensions and instructions will be in the description below. Also in the description below, David's DIY Reviews merchandise and links to all the tools used in this video. So guys, if you liked this video and you want to see more woodworking builds like this, consider subscribing. See you in the next one.